Hello everybody, Brother Nicholas James Vanderlein. Today is the 26th day of the 6th month. It's September 23rd, 2019. And this video is a warning to all of Sandy Armstrong's viewers, his followers. This video is titled, Sandy Armstrong Continues to Reject Truth. So I'm making this video because of a comment that Sandy left me about a month ago. That's very important for all of you, Sandy's followers, to be aware of. More importantly, you, you need to be aware of my response to Sandy, which has gone unanswered by Sandy because he has no answer. Since leaving this message, Sandy's been preaching on sanctification many times in his messages. And his messages seem great, but what Sandy leaves out and omits is what's most dangerous to all of you, his followers. In my next slide, I will share the comment that Sandy recently left in my video and my response but first I want to give you a little background on the exchange. As you can see, I've produced three videos and this is my fourth video in this series. These videos have been in defense to Sandy after he started to speak against me and my message. It's the Ten Commandments, which I emphasize the seventh day Sabbath, which is the literal rest for your souls. So Sandy, for whatever reason, about a year ago, decided that it was necessary to speak against me and my message. I responded to Sandy, we had a conversation on the phone, we had an email exchange, and I tried to persuade him, but he was not having it. And then in my part three, about nine months ago, and about a month ago on this video, Sandy left me a comment, and I'm going to now share that comment with you. I pinned this comment, and I also liked the comment to move it to the top, but Sandy said, the people of Israel must keep the Sabbath day by observing it from generation to generation. This is a covenant obligation for all time. It is a permanent sign of my covenant with the people of Israel. For in six days Yahweh made heaven and earth, but on the seventh day he stopped working and was refreshed. Exodus 31, verse 16 to 17. And then Sandy says, not the Gentile nations. So to everybody out there, Sandy has preached against the Sabbath. He doesn't keep the Sabbath yet. He talks about being in covenant relationship with the Most High. So in my response to Sandy, this was about a month ago, I responded to Sandy. I said, so Caleb, a Canaanite grafted into the tribe of Judah, this is what Sandy teaches. Sandy acknowledges that Caleb was a Canaanite. And all the other mixed multitude who came out of Egypt with Israel, they did not have to keep the Sabbath, yet Israel did. Of course the Gentiles grafted into Israel had to keep the Sabbath and did because there was one law for the native-born Israelite and the sojourner that dwells among them. Now, Stop real quick. More so, the sojourners that dwelled among them actually caused Israel to stumble because they stumbled first, but that's another story. In many of Paul's writings, he writes about Gentiles being grafted into Israel. In Ephesians chapter 2, verse 9, Paul says, quote, Now therefore ye are more than strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of Elohim, unquote. In Hebrews 4, verse 9, it says, quote, there's remains, there remains a Sabbath rest for the people of Elohim. So the Sabbath of, of Elohim, uh, for the people of Elohim, it remains. I told Sandy, the, Greek, the word in Greek is sabbatismos. King James Version purposely mistranslated the word and left out Sabbath. But if you read the Greek for yourself, it should, be, it should not be a problem for him because Sandy reads Greek. The context of the chapter equates not keeping the Sabbath with unbelief. And unbelief means one does not enter in. I tell Sandy, friend, you haven't been honest with yourself and Elohim, and only you know what it is. Okay, so Sandy's not being honest with Elohim. He's not being honest with himself. I know by your hypocrisy you lack fear of Elohim because you often talk in your sermons how other different people including myself, he picks these people and says that they're not qualified to teach, yet he fails to judge himself if he's qualified to teach. See, there's a video back in 2008 that Sandy left up on the internet where he says as a fact that the Lord told him that the tribulation was going to be between 2010 and 2017. Hi, this is Pastor Sandy Armstrong again, and I'm trying to do exactly what the Lord has told me, and that is to warn the world that the tribulation begins 2010 and will last to the year 2017. Being that as a fact, 
That means that the church will be gone from the world before the end of 2010. Now, I don't know if the rapture will be in 2008, 2009, or in 2010, but I do know that the church will be leaving before the end of 2010. Now, I commend Sandy for leaving it up and not trying to cover it up, but he did not have the fear to say this as a fact thing. He's obviously very confused or he's a false prophet. I want to give Sandy the benefit of the doubt because he lacks fear. Now, Sandy started this whole thing out of the blue with me because of my message, and I'm fine with that. I believe that Sandy is led to do that because Yahweh Elohim, he chastens whom he loves. And I am chasing you, Sandy, but more so, I'm not after you, Sandy. Now, I'm after your followers. You've rejected this two or three times. Says, I believe I'm only supposed to twice, and then after a heretic, if a heretic doesn't receive the word twice, I'm supposed to leave it alone. So this more so is now directed to your followers. I still hope, Sandy, you do what's right. So, Sandy, one, you need to be real about your situation. By your own standards, how you judge other teachers, okay, I never called myself to be a teacher, even though I share what I've been shown. I would believe that this disqualifies you if you if you measure yourself towards how you measure other, other people that you criticize out there. Now, you might have grounds to criticize them, which is true. Pride blinds. And pride is the original sin, and it creeps in, and people deceive themselves by it. And I love you enough to tell you the truth. And I told you, Sandy, right here, and all of your followers, the best thing you can do for yourself, Sandy, just happens to be the best teaching you can ever teach your subscribers, which is to be honest with yourself and Elohim and fear him and do the actions of Teshuva, which is receive the truth that you're incorrect, that you're wrong, and that you've been wrong. Receive that with fear and turn and do and keep it. That would be the best case scenario for your 10,000 subscribers. So immediately after Sandy left me a comment, I left him that response, and I never heard back from him. Instead, he engaged other people on once saved, always saved, and Sandy proved them to be false and wrong, which he did a good job doing. But this is a situation that Sandy continues to be chastened about, and it's a good thing, and I hope he receives it. So Sandy never replied here because he can't reply to this because he knows Caleb was a Canaanite, and it makes no sense that there would be two different laws for two different peoples. So Sandy's let this go unanswered, and so a couple of weeks ago, I say, it's been three weeks, Sandy, and you have no response to my sharp response because it is the truth. See, my, 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 he's sharp, Yahweh has sharpened my mouth, and there is no response, Sandy, because you are incorrect, and you're wrong, and you're teaching error to everybody else. That's a dangerous thing to be doing, Sandy, especially when it comes down to the covenant. Friend, Sandy, I want the best for you. And I want to share this with you, Sandy, and everybody else. When Paul came to faith, he dismissed all his Judaism. He counted it all as nothing. That's man's wisdom, man's understanding. And you should consider that, Sandy, because you have this pride that you have, the Eureka of pride, because you know the Hebrew language, because you sat under a bunch of rabbis wearing a kippah. When Paul instructs a man not to pray or prophesy with his head covered, okay, you, you had your kippah on, Sandy, and you have, somewhere along the line, not been truthful. You should count what you, your knowledge, your arm strength, your head knowledge, your arm strength, like your last name. You should count that as nothing and fear Yahweh, your, your Elohim, if you do that and receive the truth of the commandments. So everybody else following sat about this that's now engaged in this exchange that Sandy and I have, I did a video. And I recommend Sandy watch it and also Christians, all Christians watch it. It's an open letter to Christians to remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. We're supposed to do this. It's part of our covenant. Yeshua, he had a simple lesson. He said, he who's been forgiven little loves little. He who's been forgiven much loves much. And, and then Yeshua instructed those who profess their love for him. He said, if you love me, keep my commandments. So we are in covenant relationship with the Most High Elohim. Through the blood of Yeshua HaMashiach, through faith, we're justified through faith. And Yeshua said, if you love him, this is how you show your love, by keeping his commandments. The Ten Commandments, plus the New Commandment, which Yeshua gave to love the brethren. So, Sam, so I hope that we can all be blameless here. We all want to be blameless through faith, but we've got to be doers of the word and receiving the truth, not rejecting it. 
See, so Sandy has been taught that the, gent the Sabbath is not for the Gentiles. Where did he pick this up from? Probably from the same people that he got that kippah from, right? Where he learned the Jewish language because in their Noahide laws, they don't want the Gentiles, who they call the Gentiles, even though Sandy doesn't understand that most of those people that claim to be Jewish are not Jews. They're Edomites or they're Canaanites. I've proven that they're Canaanites. Zechariah chapter 14 the last verse says, there's no longer going to be Canaanites in the house of Yahweh. Well, who, well, where's the house of Yahweh? It's the temple. So all these priests in the end times right now that we live in, the ones that claim to be Levite priests, they're not Levite priests. They're imposture priests of the line of the Canaanites. They're E1B1A or E1B1B Canaanite priests claiming to be priests. They're no longer going to be in the house of Yahweh. They're no longer going to be there. So, hallelujah, we've had the, uh, we have, I've, I've been given the wisdom and understanding to prove that. I did a video on that regarding that, that, that false sacrifice that they did to set up their wicked altar where they use pallets. It's just a joke. But Sandy, he befriends these people. He's been taught by these people. He's been brainwashed by these people. But Sandy had to receive the brainwashing. So, you're not just brainwashed. You have to choose to believe a lie, which Sandy has done. And Sandy, I'm trying to open up your eyes that these people aren't, the Israelites. These people aren't the Judahites. Yes, some of them might be Judahites. Some of them might be Benjamites, but they are not Israelites. They are not the people that you think they are, Sandy. You've been deceived and you're deceiving everybody else, okay, that the state of Israel is not the biblical Israel. So with that being said, Sandy, and everybody else out there, please watch this video. Open letter to Christians to remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. This year, Christians, it is on Sunday. The Sabbath is on Sunday on Elohim's calendar, the heavenly Sabbath, which we're supposed to sync to using his only calendar, which is the solar calendar of Enoch found in Jubilees, also found in the Torah, the first five books. You can, It's in there. We have the calendar. It's restored, and the Sabbath is on Sunday this year. So now we have to remember that it's important to Yahweh Elohim, and then now we also have to remember to keep it sanctified. So to end this up, I want to leave you some scripture, Sandy, and everybody else, because Sandy continues to fight against it. And so let's look at what the prophet of Yahweh, Isaiah, had to say in Isaiah 56 regarding Gentiles keeping the Sabbath day. Thus saith Yahweh, keep ye judgment and do justice, for my salvation is near to come and my righteousness to be revealed. Blessed is the man that doeth this and the son of man that layeth hold on it. So the Son of Man is going to lay a hold on something. What is he going to lay a hold on? That keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it, and keepeth his hand from doing any evil. So this end time Son of Man, the lowercase Son of Man, he's going to keep the Sabbath. Okay? He'll be a preacher of the Sabbath. Neither let the Son of the Stranger that has joined himself to Yahweh speak. Okay? So who's the Son of the Stranger? These are non-Israelites. Okay? That have joined himself to Yahweh. Speak, saying, Yahweh hath utterly separated me from his people. Neither let the eunuchs say, Behold, I am a dry tree. For thus saith Yahweh unto the eunuchs that keep my Sabbaths, and choose the things that please me. See, the Sabbath is pleasing to Yahweh Elohim. That's why if you love him, you want to do these things out of love to please him. And take hold of my covenant. Which covenant? The covenant of the Ten Commandments that Yeshua spilled his blood that we can now be forgiven. We were slaves to breaking the Ten Commandments, Sandy, and everyone else. And when you're a slave to sin, that's all you can do is sin. But when you come into faith in Yeshua and you receive his blood and it sets you free of your sin, you are now been freed to now keep them out of love for what he did for you, dying for us. Okay? So... Let's go ahead. Okay, these the Sabbath pleases him and take hold of my covenant. Okay, we are in the new covenant. The new covenant is a blood covenant. Just like when the Ten Commandments were given, blood was sprinkled on the Israelites. Now we have the Yeshua did another blood covenant, and it's a renewed covenant. It's called the Brit Hadashah. Brit is covenant, Hadashah. That comes that word Hadashah, Hadashah, or comes from Sandy will tell you, comes from the root word Kodesh, which means renewing. So it's like this renewed covenant, okay? It says, man shall not live by bread alone, Yeshua taught, but that by every word that proceeds from the mouth of Elohim. Well, the word for uh, the Ten Commandments are also called the Ten Words, not just the Ten Commandments. So those literally came from his mouth, and we are supposed to live by him. That's how we love our neighbor, by keeping 
the last six commandments or the last five commandments. And how do we love Yahweh Elohim? By keeping the first five commandments. So by doing that, the Ten Commandments, the last five is how we love our neighbor, the first five is how we love Yahweh Elohim, and the Sabbath is of the first five, this we are now in covenant relationship. We have to do our end of the covenant. A covenant is agreement between two sides. Okay, now Yahweh did the work. Now out of love for what he did, we do this out of love for him. Because why? Because these things please him right here. It pleases him right here. Okay. And even unto them will I give in my house and within my walls a place and a name better than the sons and of daughters. And I will give them an everlasting name that shall not be cut off. And the sons of the stranger. Okay, so this is again for non-Israelites that join themselves to Yahweh to serve him and to love the name of Yahweh and not willfully cover his name with the title Lord like Sandy does often. And to be his servants. Okay, everyone that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it, and taketh hold of my covenant. So these are strangers, sons of strangers. These are anyone of, that are not Israelites that come into this covenant with Yeshua HaMashiach. Okay, everyone that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it and taketh hold of it. This is what we're called to do, which is to, look, this is it, Sandy. It's right in front of you, right here. Okay. They are called to take the Sabbath. See, you have been taught lies by the synagogue of Satan, Sandy. You, this is only discerned, not through your arm strength, Sandy, not by your own strength or your own knowledge, but by Yahweh's spirit, says Yahweh of hosts. Okay? So I hope that you receive this. Okay? I'm not here to attack you. I'm, I'm actually, I'm chastising you. Uh, the Lord chastens who he, whom he loves. So I'm chastening you, Sandy, and I hope that you receive this and you teach your congregation. Okay, there's only one more Sabbath left between now and uh, the new year, uh, or the new kingly calendar, Rosh Hashanah, coming up. Okay, and even then will I bring to my holy mountain. Well, this is that rapture that you always preach about, Sandy, being brought to Mount Zion. Okay, and make them joyful in my house of prayer, that their burnt offerings and their sacrifices shall be accepted upon my altar, for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all the people. This is that millennial temple in Mount Zion, or the, the holy mountain. Okay, that this is where we will go to, it appears in the millennial reign, is going to bring them to the holy mountain. So this is what you've been preaching about, but this has to tie in with those who keep the Sabbath from polluting it and taking hold of the covenant, being in covenant relationship through the blood of Yeshua Mashiach. It says, Yahweh Elohim, which gathereth the outcasts of Israel, saith, yet I will gather others to him besides those that are gathered unto him. So this is all about the strangers being gathered to him, which are outside of Israel, coming into Israel. This isn't all about Israel and Judah, but this is about those that are sons of the, of the stranger. So, look, we are called to keep the Ten Commandments. We are called to remember the Sabbath and keep it holy, Sandy. This is all I have for you. You cannot answer this because there's no, you cannot deny these things. If you're denying these things, you're lying against the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of truth. So I'm calling you out, Sandy. You know, I this is like three, Paul says two times, then reject a man and he's a heretic. Sandy, but I'm here for your people, okay? And I'm here for all the people in your congregation to bring you back to these truths, to open up your eyes. So I hope that you receive this. Everyone out there watches the video on, on, on my, my, my open letter to Christians on remembering the Sabbath and keeping it holy. And I hope that you take this serious. The Sabbath is on Sunday this year, according to the Enoch Zadok Priest solar calendar that's been fully restored. Hallelujah, we have that understanding. So re please watch that video and... Uh, be a doer of the word, not a hearer only, deceiving your own selves. So I'm signing off, and shalom to anyone out there who receives this message. Watch out for Sandy Armstrong's teaching on this, unless he re unless he repents of it, and I hope he does, but we'll see. So don't follow man, follow the spirit of truth that leads and guides you into all truth. So I'm signing off here, and, and shalom to you that receive this.